Welcome back to part three of The Mustard Show. Our next guest is a man who's travelled all across the world tackling some of the harshest environments on the face of our planet. Yes, from the crocodile caves of Madagascar to the Amazon basin, wildlife cameraman Martin Haywood-Smith has visited some of the most amazing locations. And it's our pleasure to welcome him back to his home county and into our most amazing studio. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Martin. Hello there. Uh, Makes a change to actually be this side of the camera. Well, really that's does. true. Do you actually, like it? Doesn't it? That is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit edgy, but yeah, it's a, it's a change from me being on the other side over there and filming, yeah. yeah, so yeah. And in fact, you, you didn't always work that side of the camera, did you? Because you had a very different career to begin with. I did to start with, yes. I started off in the Royal Navy when I was 16, when you just were sent off to sea practically by did, your did parents. Did you run away to sea? Practically, no. Um, it was something that's always been in my family side, that they've always been in the Navy. So yes, one carried on with the tradition of going yeah. off to the Royal Navy. Yeah. But as a hobby, you always had your camera with you? Always had camera in hand, always taking photographs, and especially as my father was a press photographer for the Eastern Daily Press, I could always then come back to the, his lab yeah, and brilliant. do the magic developing, yeah. which of course you don't do these days. So of course, so even though you went into the Navy, obviously it was in the family, wasn't it? Yes, This was probably something was. you were going to do. Exactly. So, so how did you move from uh, being in the Navy then to, to the work that you do now? I've always loved wildlife. I can always remember going off to my grandparents' house down the Acle Strait to Great Yarmouth and mm. seeing herons on the left-hand side and swans out of the right-hand side window and always yelling out to the my father in the car, stop, stop, must take <laughs> photographs, must take photographs. So yeah, it has always been in the blood and always that field craft. But you've, I mean, you've, you've traveled to a wonderful place we'll talk about in a minute, but we're very lucky here in Norfolk, aren't we, in particular, the, the kind of wildlife oh, we do have. Fantastic, with the diversity of different wildlife, the habitats, it's absolutely magical to have that North Norfolk coastline, not just that, down to the broads, it's a magical place. Yeah. And because you worked on Survival, which uh, is uh, a wonderful Anglia production, uh, still shown in many parts of the yes. world, um, not made anymore, unfortunately. But how did that come about? That was a very, very lucky start. There was a, a good director there, um, Mike Lindley, bless him. Yeah, and Mike's still around. Yes, still, Mike's still yeah, around. Yeah, yes. still doing lots of things. And I helped out Chris Knights. He was a um, Survival oh, yeah. cameraman, and, and I assisted um, Chris Knights for about four years on two films and that's when you could do a one hour film in one and a half two years and yeah. of course it's all yes, now changed yes, now yeah. you all have to do everything practically in a week um but in those days yes it was a, a hard it was a hard nut to crack to be honest with you there was always a drawbridge up to get in you had to do everything on film on super 16 yeah. so to even go and hire a camera that would cost a thousand pounds for the day to shoot a roll of film, 10 minutes roll of film to buy and process was £300 to show your show reel off to the survival or to the NHU. So yeah, it was, it was a hard one to sort of get into and you really had to sort of be eager and willing to have self-motivation and that drive and that willpower yeah. to keep forcing through. And you've worked with some wonderful people as well, haven't you? Sir David Attenborough for, for one. Yes, with Sir David on um, Life of Birds and on lots of the Natural World programmes. Uh, Jimmy Doherty, um, that was a bit of a hoot in um, doing Jimmy's Farm. Yeah. And more recently with um, Ray Mayers with Wild Britain. And we just is... saw you there with Alan Tipman ah, as well. So what were you Alan. doing there? That was, that was a fantastic um, gig. You, you get to know all these different producers and directors, and one just phoned me up this morning on the way in to do with a Torval and Dean thing, but that's completely different. But, <laughs> that's uh, random. That's very, very random. Wildlife yeah. with Torval yeah. and Dean. Exactly, that exactly. That's, a, one. that's yeah. another Wildlife yeah. on ice. <laughs> yes, yes. We <laughs> <laughs> catch on. Yes, we could have a competition. So with um, different directors, they're always phoning up and saying, I've got this latest gig. So yeah. um, a friend of mine phoned up and said, we've got this gig down at Highgrove. We're going to be doing all the wildlife down there, as well yeah. as all the flowers, the gardens and everything else. Alan will be doing the presenting. Are you up for it? Right. So there I was down at Highgrove for about four or five months down there. Wow. Me. And you've been to lots of places, of course, haven't you? We've got been some very lucky. pictures of some of the places uh, that you've been. You've been in, I'm just looking here, you've been uh, hanging out of helicopters. Uh, was there a reason for that? Or? There was, yeah, not just <laughs> being pushed out. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was good for oh, And there you are, hanging out of a hanging helicopter. Out, yeah. yes. not, not looking very happy there. No, no, you know, they're going to go flying Oh, I say, oh dear, they don't look Young very Marsh well, do they? Chicks. Yeah, oh, gosh, that must have been quite difficult to get, though. That was fun and games. Where's this here? This is the reed-cutting... 
Bernie Bishop up at um, Clive Nature Reserve up there. And to do that, we had to rig scaffolding tar up there because we were then going to do that for a BBC yeah. major programme. And we then had to show the burning of the reeds. And luckily, the reeds were blowing in the right direction. <laughs> and that's a manatee, if manatee, right. Manatee, yeah, yeah. Do quite a bit of underwater stuff as well, mainly snorkelling. Um, this was to do with a discovery programme. And that, that was exceptional, just to be in clear waters. Well, it seems that. like really diverse, because you'd, you'd imagine one photographer or cameraman is specialised in one particular area, but you, it's all animals. You, you, it is enjoy. all animals. You can't just pitch and hole yourself. You have to do the broad landscape of yeah. everything these day and age. Well, so, we've just seen a picture there. There you are. Ah. <laughs> is that, that, is that, that's a very big that's hair. That's a very large I must say, it's a huge hair. That's and this you is your, North this North is your, North. yes, you do. There's yeah. lots, lots <laughs> of them around. I've never seen one quite as big as that. Um, but this is your new project, isn't it? This is my uh, latest you, you've project. Done Come yeah. back to home roots again, and it's been fantastic to do. And I know you have with us here, sort of lurking. A little friend. Lurking. A little yeah. friend. Behind you, staring me in the face. It's a bit weird, this. I'm just going to give you a hand. Because this is Harvey. Harvey. Harvey do you you don't hair. remember Harvey, do you? The film. No. Is no. it named from the film? Harvey. Practically, yes. You've got it. You've got uh, it. There so. we are. So this is um, Hair Cam. Hair Cam. So poor old Harvey was um, one of nature's road kills, knocked yes. down in the road, picked up, and then taken to a local taxidermist um, near Norwich. And I said, I just want him to be standing upright, but please yeah. don't pack his chest too much. He said, what? what do you mean, don't pack his chest too much? I said, because at the end of the day, Harvey's going to be taking photographs, and oh, this actually slips into here. He has some Amazing. kind of bib and brace with elastic bands. <laughs> Harvey then goes out into the field. I then have to try and find a hair run. He looks like a tourist hair. For that he is, there, isn't he? He's getting very, very <laughs> good at taking photographs. Oh. Absolutely brilliant. So other hairs come up, very, very inquisitive, sniff around, yeah. and they're about hair, and Harvey's taking photographs of them. So the book is all about hairs. So it's, it's all about hairs. hairs. Norfolk hairs, and hair, also yeah. with what they come into contact oh. with throughout the seasons, whether it be English partridges, uh, pink there, yeah. geese, pheasants, yeah. barn owls, pheasants, yes. And there's practically three stories running through there. There's the changing seasons that we have going all the way through. And then there's also the Holy Grail looking for the Barsham blue hair. Ah. Sometimes now and again you get a. Is that the big blue one we saw yeah, there? Yeah, it could have been. Wish it was. Because it, hairs, one assumes, jump off, don't they? How, how do you, very quickly, because we're running out of time, but how on earth do you sit there long enough to capture a hair? Because that must be really difficult. For days and months in hedgerows. Yeah. Yeah. Just and hence having Harvey. And hence having well. Harvey now and again out in the field. He can be in one location while I'm yeah. in another location. So, yes, to take it all the way through frost, snow, Incredible. And, and just to sit mm. out there. Marvellous, yeah. Thank you so much for coming in. It's really interesting. I might get myself one of those, put it in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for tonight, but we'll be back at the same time tomorrow night with more stories from the fine county of Norfolk. A huge thank you to all of our guests this evening, and an even bigger thank you to the lovely Miss Helen McDermott for keeping me company on the sofa. Have you enjoyed it? I have very much. Thank you very much indeed, and I hope that uh, Beth gets better soon. Yes. She'll be back tomorrow. Absolutely. Or will it be Rennie Zellweger? Who knows? Anyway. I'll take anyone at the minute. No, well, You're very good. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Helen, thank you so much for joining me. That's right. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Right, have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow night at 6.15. Good night. I'm back to me, Cabbard. <laughs>